Good afternoon from Nairobi. We're here at the celebration of the International Data Center Day. I'm here together with Dan Quatch, Managing Director East Africa at Africa Data Centers. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well, and thanks a lot. Really, for me, we are celebrating the International Data Center Day in the year 2025. This, looking at it, you know, when I reflect back, we started our operation as a data center player back in 2012. So we are literally speaking, you know, over 10 years of us being in the data center space. And for the very first time, we are now celebrating the data center day in Africa, right here in Kenya, with a lot of exciting things having happened. So many other players having come into the very space that we are in. And that makes for a good thing. It's a testament that we are in the right industry. We are doing the right thing to bring that digital infrastructure gap. Uh, exciting times, exciting times. Yeah. As you celebrate here the data centers, what would you say are the biggest challenges and opportunities at the moment and also taking into account, let's say, the fast acceleration of AI? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I, you're right to speak, to immediately dive into the subject of AI because that's what everyone is talking yeah. about as the next big thing. Uh, in fact, we say the next big thing, but it's already disrupted us. So we are already in the era of AI. Now, as a data center player, of course, we've had an awesome run. We started off really as just, you know, data center players that were hosting the local telcos, the local enterprise players. We brought in the cloud back in Africa by being hyperscale ready. But now we have to be future proof by making sure that we can host the next generation of AI mm. GPUs or infrastructure in our data center environments. So really that brings in the, the very first challenge is we have to think of how to redesign our data center environments, redesign the, the data center infra, infrastructure that we have so that the power that we've got can actually accommodate the high power consumption that is required by AI. We have to really think of how do we then make sure that we can have a combination of both the air, co air cooling that is a standard of what we are currently hosting, but we have to co also complement that with the liquid cooling. That is all, that, that's the only practical way to actually accommodate and host AI infrastructure or workloads in our data center environments. But yes, I think as it is, it's a challenge, yeah. but it's as well a very good opportunity because Africa has power. Yeah. Africa has skills and talent that can actually build this kind of infrastructure. Uh, we have very good and re good regulatory and investment climate. You know, in Kenya where we are right now, we are known for green power. In Kenya where we are, you know, in terms of our regulatory environment, we are doing pretty well. Yeah. We work very well with the government so that we can make sure that the right kind of rule laws are actually put in place to support digital infrastructure investment. And of course, the government is also very intentional to make sure that they can support us by also consuming the digital service or the digital infrastructure that we are putting in this continent. So that makes for a good thing because, of course, we are already supporting the private sector players. We just want to also make sure that we've got an equal, an equal, an equal opportunity to also support the government or public sector business here. So where do you see the biggest challenge in terms of development? Um, in terms of development, I will say at the moment, the biggest issue we've had in Africa is just to make sure that we can actually um, make for convincing case yeah. for the hyperscalers to bring their cloud infrastructure, their AI infrastructure into the continent. To bring the investment. Exactly. So they need to bring the investment. But I think the very first thing they want to do is to make sure that they can clearly get an understanding of what that market is. Yeah. So they want to make sure that they have an understanding of the demand. Yeah. But that is where we come in as, as, as the local African, you know, technology service providers because we have a good understanding on how to probably create that demand or create, create that market in the absence of statistics or data that can actually give you indi an indication of how that market will look like. We like it that we actually create demand as opposed to really just sitting sitting back and trying to and, and doing a lot of analysis. We so amidst the analysis that we do for every market, we actually also believe in doing things and making sure that they work out for us. Yeah. Yeah. Makes yeah, sense. Okay. So when we look at the data center industry, and you mentioned it earlier in, in your speech, that we lack of, I would not say competence, but of skilled people, <laughs> not because we don't have them. Mm -hmm. It's just because they might run away, taking bigger jobs overseas or in Europe. So how can we overcome this issue, especially if you look from a maintenance perspective over the next few years? Um, for the technology service providers or players like ourselves, we are already doing the right thing by making sure that first and foremost, we are intentional in terms of supporting local talent. Mm. So for us, we actually don't see uh, a skills gap, yeah. but we actually create employment opportunities for local talent. That's something that you do. But the very next thing that you are, you are rightfully actually saying is 
you know, we are challenged as the te technology service providers to partner with other industry players so that we can support by way of working with high institutions of learning, creating incub incubation centers so that we can sort of make sure that we are also giving the those that are coming out of universities and the institutions that we are talking about, an opportunity to acquire the right industry experience. And this industry experience, this is where we come in as data center players. We speak to students and make sure that they have an understanding of what exactly is a data center and what opportunities does it bring to your table. But most importantly as well, what can we do so that we can handhold you so that you can be the next data center expert or professional in the space that we are in. So yes, looking at IT and computer science experts, making sure that the electrical and mechanical engineers are actually also having a, a, a bigger interest yeah. to make sure that they can support us by way of creating these resilient and stable data center environments that we are talking about. We want our talent, which is so good and in very good, good quantities, to not just serve Kenya, but to serve the global. Industry. Okay, thank you. It's great to see that you have a very clear understanding of what has to happen and you also try to accelerate it with your professional and with your background. Mm. It's very nice. I'm a product of the same, and I just believe that really uh, I will, I'm privileged to uh, have been a data center professional that I am today. I should make sure that I'm creating the next generation of data center. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, Thank you. That was Tech African News from the International Data Center there here in Nairobi. You can find more on techafricanews.com.